So here's the question. Can an R5 with the 600 mil F11, which is 45 megapixels, one of their best top of the line cameras, nice lens, or the Sony a7R4 with the 600 mil lens? We're gonna do some comparison to answer the question is, if you go with Canon, um, what do the images look like out of this lens? It's a, a very affordable, very popular lens, but we wanna do some comparisons, some side by side things we're going to get into though before that is the weight there's a considerable weight difference this is about six i don't know the lens is about 4.65 pounds and the body's probably another pound and a half two pounds so we're probably about six and a half pounds the actual canon 600 mil lens is only two pounds and the body's probably another pound and a half so we're probably about three pounds so about half the weight if we look at the dimensions this is about 15 and a half, 16 inches. This setup is extended is about 13 inches and then closed down. The lens actually closes down and it's about 10, 10 inches or so. So considerable size difference, but the reach is very similar, kind of. And this is the situation. Not all 600 mil lenses are built the same as far as focal length. There's a lot of shenanigans, a lot of things that happen as far as um, what the field of view looks like and that we're going to jump into that. So the Canon actually gives up about 26% resolution to the Sony body, which is 61 megapixels. And we're going to see if that actually makes a difference as well. You know, how much, how much resolution in that this, the 600 mil lens, as I mentioned before, is very affordable. It's about $699. The setup for the Sony, I would say the two to 600 lens is about 2,000, 2,100, 2,200. So significant difference, but the, the, the reach is about the same. Let's get into the first photo. So we have this photo, typical, typical postcard, typical card, and let's look at them one by one. And we see the, the Sony is at 600 mil on a tripod, ISO 100 with a little bit of softbox zoomed in, let's look at it. And then let's take a look at the Canon. Again, that's 600 millimeters. And we should notice a difference. This is one of the things that not all 600 millimeters are the same. Look at the crop difference. I mean, look at the difference in the, the zoom. I would say that the Canon has at least another 100 to almost 200 millimeters worth of zoom on it. and can't really tell for certain, but this is one of the things that happens with a lot of zooms with the Sony. in, in this case, if it is a true 100, 600 mil, that means the Canon 600 mil is probably 700, 750 or something along that lines. But some of the things that happen with lenses, with these zoom lenses, especially if they have a high amount of, of zoom capability, one lens in particular is the Tamron 18 to 400, a huge amount of zoom, but at 400 millimeters with an APS-C crop of Canon, it's supposed to be 640 millimeters. That lens did not anywhere come close. If you were in birding range, let's say 15, 20 feet of 640 millimeters, it was probably around 450 to 500. It was pretty pitiful. And I think they call that lens breathing, lens, uh, lens breathing and what happens is, is if you zoom in to something further away, the lens actually focuses and it kind of becomes a true 400 or 600 mil lens. And I think that is what is going on with the, with the Sony. But yeah, we'll, we'll look at that because that's going to play a role in actual resolution downrange, what we're finding. So if we use the APS-C sensor on both these, the Sony comes in at 900 millimeters and about 26 megapixels. If we look at the Canon, this comes in around 18 to 20 megapixels at 960 millimeters. And so we'll take a look at this and this actually kind of gives us a little bit more detail. We notice the center of, of the image is very, very sharp. We look at the outskirts and if you look close, at the background, you'll notice a big difference in depth of field and blur. Notice the Canon actually has um, very little, I guess, 
uh, depth of field because we're shooting at f11 and that cannot be changed and if we look at the sony we can actually see the coin in the back and the painting is is a little bit blurred out and that probably that subject's probably four or five inches behind the actual card and that's one of the things to note is the depth of field is different which makes some of the the comparisons not quite as equal because obviously the cannon's going to look a little sharper if we take a look at the next image which is actually the coin behind it and you'll notice that at 600 millimeters with the coin that the actual card in front is now blurred out in the sony but if you look at the canon it's not blurred out it's fairly you know it, a little bit but it's still somewhat way more legible than than the sony sony version so we if we zoom in on this to go APS-C sensor 900 mil on the sony and 960 millimeters on the canon we start to see that wow the the actual canon version or the 600 mil f11 is extremely sharp and this is what kind of threw me through through threw me for a loop I, I would say that i expected the sony can or the sony lens to just totally wipe up this small uh, very lightweight f11 lens i just didn't think it would be at that level but to me the canon is sharper all the way almost all the way around it definitely in the center you know and and, well, I would just say definitely. Let's let's say it's it's extremely close, and I would give the nod to the Canon for being sharp. Now, the Canon is actually built at f11. It's kind of specialized. That's just where it shoots, and it only shoots. The Sony, I shoot at f6.3. I know I could get it a little bit sharper if I was to um, stop down a little bit, go to 7.1 f-stop or 8 f-stop and and sharpen this up but that's not normally where i shoot the sony 2 to 200 to 600 because to be honest at f 6.3 this lens is plenty sharp i would much rather have a little bit more speed a little bit more light for iso especially if you're in a blind especially if it's really low light like early early morning before i would say golden hour you're going to need that a little bit extra ump to get it over the over that over the hump there but if you look at the entire entire um, picture on both of them yeah they're they're both really sharp i got to give the the edge to canon on this and, and then if you look closely let's let's just zoom in on the coin this is this is the biggest thing here because of the zoom is so different you know we're at 960 millimeters 900 millimeters with the sony but look at the difference when we back up a little bit just to that how much closer the the canon looks and i'm going to say it's it to me it looks it's like it's well over a thousand almost into 1100 range but if we zoom into the coin and just crop out the coin this is what i measured with the sony i measured 1058 pixels just about squared so that square there is 1058 by 1058 on the canon i measured 1005 by 1005 on the image there's only like i don't know six percent difference between the the resolution difference so we went from 26 um, percent resolution 25 percent resolution difference at 600 millimeters if it was both truly matched up at 600 millimeters but when we start cropping in and looking at the true focal length of these lenses I have to crop a lot more with the Sony to get it to match up to the Canon. So here's the deal. This, the lens for the Sony, you can say it's a true 600 and maybe the Canon is not a true, maybe the, uh, a true 700, but you just have to crop in more with this Sony to get it there. And so you're giving up from 26% resolution at full frame, you know, all the way in when you really get down to the nuts, nuts and bolts of this you only have about a six percent resolution boost which is is really nothing it's it's really not that big a deal and it comes down to the lens quality or how well the lens performs on the body definitely going to give this a, a little bit of a win to the canon 600 mil it's very affordable there are some caveats though caveats here there are some things that we need to look at first 
the Canon 600 f11 has a minimum focus distance of 4.5 meters. That is not great. That coin, when we back up and we actually look at the full photo at 600 mil, is, is pretty small. And that's the size of a Wren or a Warbler. So you're going to have to do substantial cropping. And this is one of the things I had a conversation or I, I put out an email to Brent Hall because he has this camera. He uses it and he loves it. And I said, you know, Brent, is this, is this what I'm thinking? Are you able to get full photos of really small birds or are you hitting the, the minimum focus limit? He wrote back, no, I, I have to crop in on the really small birds. I just can't. If I get, I can get too close that the minimum focus distance basically backs out and, and kind of misfocuses or just can't focus at all. The second is F11. Now, in one of my previous videos, you know, what was mentioned is the F11 and ISO. Low light. You're going to be living at ISO 12,008. I've been playing with this lens. Haven't been out doing wildlife with it, but playing with this lens and it seems shutter speed i keep it at 1 3 20th that's kind of an average i can go lower but you're going to be living at 6400 all the way up to 12,800 10,000 and above and to be surprised you know this this test was done at iso 100 but i was very very impressed with the r5 sensor being able to shoot at you know 12,800 and and higher it it just it's not that big of a deal it seems to work or at least in the photos that i have yeah it it maps away some of the detail it's a little noisy here and there but it's totally doable but just know you're probably going to get two or three stops um with let's say a sony or 6.3 5.6 lens there's the canon 100 to 500 yeah that's that's going to get your iso down to more I guess a little bit easier level if you're going to be shooting pre pre golden light something very early in the morning five six o'clock in the morning or you need you need that the next one we talked about the minimum zoom if you're in a forest you're going to get a double whammy first if you're shooting large animals let's say a deer you're going to run into probably headshots only because probably in a forest you only get 20 or 30 uh, yard maximum photo and the bigger the animal the more issue you have. So this will really shine for kind of smaller animals. But if you get a very large animal, you're going to be shooting at a minimum 600. That's where the Sony and these multi-zoom lenses really shine because you can back off to 200, get a full body shot, go into 600, get a head shot. Yeah, that works. So I hope you guys found this, this useful. Um, for the money, 699, it's a very good lens. And I think it holds up well to a very good lens. And it's not really any any fault no real winner there they're just different use cases the canon is one of those that you could take hiking you could take it around it's a, it's extremely lightweight where i just wouldn't want to take the sony out hiking and doing that kind of stuff with it's just it's just too large to be hiking up and down hills and that for me you know unless unless you're doing it but i'm talking multiple miles i just rather take something small a point and shoot and that this kind of fits the bill so guys that is it and hopefully I will see you next week.